Well, my goodness, how long has it been? <laughs> I am Tiffany. Let's start with the intro. So I am Tiffany with Beyond Swatches. I am Beyond Swatches, honestly. And um, we are now in a new location, my new house that I just bought a couple months ago. And I've been getting settled in this new place. So it's been pretty cool. It's definitely an adjustment from apartment living. The responsibility is whew, up there. <laughs> Um, but I'm so glad that you are back. I'm glad to be back. I've honestly been wanting to sit down and just talk to you guys, but I just have been, yeah, you know, just, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so it has not been something that I could physically do, but I am glad that you're back. I hope that your world has been giving you some good things. And if it has not, uh, you have my sympathies and my empathies or whatever you need from me. I'll give you a virtual hug if you want it. Um, but always, as I do every day, I just pray for people in general. So I hope that you get some comfort from that and that will do that. So what have I been up to? Uh, not a whole lot of anything, but a lot of stuff, right? So the major thing that I finished was if you remember a couple of videos back i did an unboxing if you will of a linen quill um the linen quill yarn from pearl soho and i was just over the moon excited for it <laughs> and i finally got it and it's in the peony pink so i made a tea a tea called the vaga tea but it has that little squirrely question mark thing at the top so it's probably not exactly vaga tea but I don't know how to pronounce it so but this is that all finished now how did I come up with this pattern or why did I want to make this pattern no I have not filled in the ends yet I mean sewed in the ends yet because I finished it and I need to block it and I wore it around the house and it was a little too itchy so I haven't uh, bothered with the end yet because it was still 100 degrees outside and it just wasn't time to wear it. So I wasn't too concerned. But now it's starting to get a little cooler. So I'm ready to stick it in some water and make sure it you know, wears well. Um, but anyway, so this tea, um, if you look at the yoke, doesn't it give you in a way those ranunculus vibes? Let me pull it apart. Oh, that's actually the back. Hold on. Anyway. Doesn't it give you kind of like ranunculus yoke vibes, right? So I was going to cast on another ranunculus out of this. And then I was like, but I don't really want to make another one right now. I want to try something new. So I went scrolling through Ravelry and this is what I came up with. I'll insert, of course, a picture of the original pattern so that you can see what the pictures look like. And I loved it. I thought it was so interesting looking. Then I downloaded the pattern. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta get my coffee. Then I downloaded the pattern and I was just like, oh, this is gonna be fun. Um, so it was definitely a fun knit. It was challenging and fiddly when you first get started because you kinda gotta get used to the way how these um, decorative stitches are work. But it became the part that I was most excited for. Um, what's pretty cool about it though, it only happens every couple of rounds in the beginning. And then once you get onto the body, it only happens every four rounds, if, if I remember correctly. I, I really don't remember at this point, but I loved working on it. Um, there were points where I was just like, oh, I want this to be over with. But a good solace for me is that it didn't have any sleeves <laughs> so as soon as i finished the body it was like maybe eight to ten rows on each sleeve and we were done so that was pretty cool um and like i said the yarn was that linen quill yarn from pearl soho and this color is called the peony pink to me it looks like a ballerina pink but yeah whatever tomato tomato um, it has this cute little side detailing thing. Let's see if I can show you pretty well. So that same fiddly stitch that I was talking about is on the sides as well. Let's see. There it goes. 
And so you do this, you make this stitch every four. It, that must be what it is because I keep saying it. So it must be every four rounds. And then similar to the ranunculus, there were some increases and some decreases and some, there no cable. She recommended, of course, using a cable needle, but I had never could find mine. So I've always done a, you know, hold a stitch and just do a cable without a cable needle. But these were stitches that required you to wrap them. You can't do that very easily without a cable needle. So I ended up using a spare knitting needle that I just always tucked into like the shirt. Um, a couple of times I had a sewing, the tapestry needle. I had a larger one, so I just stuck that in the ball of yarn. And when I needed it, I'd use it. So yeah, I mean, you just made it work, but I really do like it. I will put a video of me in this when I kind of did a, a little try on when I first finished but I really did like it. Now, this yarn. I have not blocked it, so we won't talk about what it feels like in that sense, but initially, it feels fine, but it has a prickle that when it's a thousand degrees outside, you don't want no prickle. So, I'm gonna soak it, put some, I've heard use like um, regular con uh, hair conditioner and put it in the water. I don't know if I want to do that. I think I'm just going to do a regular like soak wash thing and just see how it feels. Um, and then if I have to do it again with a conditioner or a fabric softener, excuse me, it has all of that fiber and fluff and alpaca or whatever flying stuff. Um, so then if I have to do that, then I will. But for the most part, I still love it. I can't wait until it's really crispy days and I can wear it all day. Um, let's talk about this one. This is that Easy Eyelet Yoke Light by Knititude. Oh, who made this? Mm. Leslie? Nope. Something Freed Home? Why I can't remember? I don't know. Because I, I, I can't remember. But when you saw the pattern, you would have saw her name. So I apologize designer person you did a really great job and I loved it anyway this is by Knititude and I have been wanting to make the cardigan version of this for so long but I made one cardigan and that back and forth purling was gonna kill me and so I just have not been able to psych myself up to do the cardigan of this but maybe one day I will I don't know but this is the easy eyelet yoke light I made this with a now discontinued yarn. It's uh, by Fibra, Fibra, Fibra Natura, or Fibra Naturals. Fibra Naturals, there you go. And this was in the colorway. This is not the green one. I think this is Grace Anka. Grace and Anka, I had both in my stash. One is a yellowy green and one is a pure yellow, like a butter yellow. I think this one is called the Anka. Is this continued anyway, but if you happen to find somebody with someone's stash on Ravelry or Etsy or something, you could probably get it if you wanted to. It's a really nice cotton. It has, um, like, it's not stiff. It's not a kitchen cotton by any means. It has, um... It has a nice feel to it. It feels really good, but it feels substantial. It doesn't feel flimsy. It's a category three weight. Um, I want to say this was a little heavier than what the pattern recommended, but I did the, the size that I chose, which was the 2X. Um, the one thing that I don't particularly care for is in the, the yoke. I wish... I could maybe I should go back so you can see I wish that I could bring this line because I don't want my cleavage showing you know I wish that I could squeeze these lines together a little bit because I like it but depending on what you wear under it it shows you know and I don't want you to see what color bra I have on today <laughs> so um, but that's just a personal thing and I like this right here but maybe if we would have started number two right here 
number three right here and then stop to number four right at the top of like the bra line right there that would have been enough but at the time I didn't think it all the way through and as of right now my cat brought in a cicada and she's I don't know trying to kill it but anyway um, as of right now I have never really been too sure how to get rid of a line that's in the pattern because I want to say these are increases and decreases in you know this whole round or whatever so I need to figure out and if you know please tell me or point me in the direction of a video because there's another pattern that I would like to try that has something similar going on but I just don't want the lower level of the eyelets I want to get rid of those but I still need this the stitch counts in order to have it fit so we'll start with a simple thing the next few are works in progress but um hold please look at my cup isn't it cute it's a busy bee and it has a little bee on there i think my one of my kids picked this up out of ross I had some Folgers Dark 1850 blend. That's some good coffee. Anyway, so next up is these um, hats. They're light. So this is by CJ's Design. I want to say, and I will put it up when I, you know, edit. On Instagram, she is CJ.Design, but with no vowels in there, I think. But it's a free pattern on her blog and it's called the maple beanie and what this essentially is is you know how you make a hat on a knitting machine and you just crank it out until it's this long tube and then you take the tube and you fold it in and you sew the top that's this except you did this manually so as a free pattern i will be comfortable in saying <laughs> um you cast on 48 stitches and you just knitting around, I think she said 130 rounds. And then once you get to the end, you basically close one end of the tube and then you come out and close the other end of the tube, put the two ends together. And that's how you get the little gather at the top. It essentially becomes a reversible hat, but let's see. I'm not a hat person, but you see, with this type, you can create the, the brim or you can have it back a little bit if you like and put a little pom-pom thing up there. But this particular one, I have a black one that I did at 48 stitches. And it is the same wool, which is by Universal Yarn, and it's their Deluxe Worsted. But that black yarn feels denser for some reason. So I am under the impression that coloring makes a difference when it comes to natural fibers i don't know because i don't do that kind of thing but that one it has a little bit of stretch and has a little bit of give but it feels more densely compacted the stitches so when i made this one i said well i'm gonna go up a few stitches to loosen it up a little bit and now it feels extra big so i would if i was to sell this at a market or craft fair or something I would market this as a um, large to an extra large because look how much it it stretches out really big and my head ain't that big <laughs> for me I normally do a child size because I got a little beanie head depending of course on whether I have braids in or crochet hair or weaving hair whatever so my hair you know my head size is different based on what I got on it but I love this maple beanie concept. It is essentially, like I said, a manual version of a knitting machine hat. And I was wondering why 48 stitches? But as I understand it, the knitting machine has 48 needles. So that's how big it would be. It's a perfect mindless project, especially because you're knitting it for so long, 130 rows. But it goes by really quick, especially if you're watching a good movie with a lot of suspense. Oh yeah, it's going. Um, so I did the same uh, concept of a maple beanie, but I did it in a one by one rib for the whole hat is what I'm going to do here. 
and just to see what it looks like because I'm just curious no particular reason um, but this is same needle same cast on it's 48 stitches this one is made with the wool ease yarn and this color is called antler and it to me I don't know lately I've been feeling like yarn has just been feeling different this and also I'm I can't remember the last time I might have used this wool ease yarn so maybe it's just been a while for me but it feels weird it feels almost papery but it's okay I mean it's it's functional it's doing what it's supposed to do so that's what I have on here that is the maple beanie modified if you will this is going to be in a one by one rib but it's still 48 inches I mean 48 stitches and it's I got it on a size 16 you know an eight inch cord but these needles are not made for 16 inch needles they're actually I think a five or four and a half inch needle so it's a little tight but once you get past those first five rows or so it knits seamlessly and around you just keep going and honestly everyone needs a nice quick project to throw in a car or take to a store when you're waiting in line or you know whatever whatever so that's that um, and it's a nice simple nice and simple knit I could see me doing it in a bunch of colors because I did a black and I have the white and now I'm doing beige um, I'm thinking I need a pop of color so of course I was thinking hot pink because you know it's me <laughs> um, but I don't know if that's what I really want to do because I don't know how much people out there love hot pink but I would do a royal blue I have some of that in there um, Maybe a gray would be nice because you got to think about people matching their clothes and colors. You hear all this noise? That's the cat. Get your bug. Now she got it stuck underneath the vacuum cleaner. Anyway, um, next up on the list of works in progress that I really am not even that hard pressed to finish because I'm just taking my time. This was a clearance yarn from Hobby Lobby from a couple years ago, I think. I really don't remember because I don't really go there that often. But they had this on clearance and it's a variegated yarn. Um, it's 100% cotton. This is a one weight, like a fingering weight. Um, and so I decided to cast on 10 can knits, simple, sweater they have a whole release and it's a, a basic hat or a classic hat they have a sweater and a cardigan and I want to say there was something else like I think it was four items but those are the three that I remember the hat the cardigan the sweater and so I cast it on a sweater and what I like about Tin Can Knits patterns is they give you options for three different yarn weights, so fingering, DK, and worsted. And you pretty much just follow the sizes, you know, follow the directions as written for your size and for the yarn that you're using. And they color code it to make it easier for you to kind of keep up with the yarn weights. Um, but look at the coloring. You probably can't see it because it's a very subtle, subtle fade here but it is fading from white to a very pale pink and at the point where you think you saw the pink it actually is pink it's starting to fade in such a way that it's very very seamless which is pretty cool because i don't like those sharp lines so it's like a nice little dip dyed ombre effect it'll be interesting to see how we get from this white into this blue um, and what that transition looks like so um, that tin can knits pattern is in a book they I think they do sell the pattern separate like individually but I want to say it's a part of a collection they have books and collections so that you can get all of their stuff they have a free collection too which has the flax I think everybody remembers that flax light and the flax sweater that was used for a lot of beginner knitter classes. Um, can you get your butt out the way? 
move. She was shaking the camera. Did you see that? <laughs> um, so 10 Can Knits has a bunch of free patterns that you can use. They're perfect for beginners, perfect for, I just want to make something. Um, I've seen people take the flax sweater and take the ridges off the arm and just make a regular raglan type sweater. So you have many, many options with their patterns and I think they're really well written. Um, and like I tell any beginner, just follow the directions. Follow the directions word by word, line by line, step by step, and you will be fine. Um, it looks really overwhelming because there's fine print and there's diagrams and there's charts and there's a bunch of numbers and there's it's all kinds of things going on and I want to say it's like 16 to 20 pages long but you only need probably five or six of those pages so just take your time go through it you know read what applies to you highlight make notes you know don't get overwhelmed by a pattern it's still just a direction it's like following a recipe in a cookbook just one step at a time and then the last thing that I have going on, which I don't even know how long I've been supposedly working on this, but it has just stayed in a corner. I've moved, it's been in another corner. But this is called The Whisper. And I was on the hunt for a, and I'll put a picture of course, because I do not remember at all who this is written by. But this, I want to say, is also a free pattern that I found on uh, Ravelry. But it's like a poncho wrap situation. And this is made out of that Alegria yarn from Fairmount Fibers or Manos del Uruguay. And it's a nice tonal type of thing. I actually had made a solstice something. I forgot. I had washed it. It got it got caught on something in the dryer and a bra loop. I don't know what I was thinking when I put all the stuff in the same wash, but it got in there. It got messed up. And instead of me trying to fix it, I just got mad and I threw the whole thing away. So I don't even have my sweater anymore. But I wanted a poncho type thing right I'm gonna show you let me show you hold on all right I went to go get the book that started this whole quest for a poncho all right so we'll start with this one isn't it cute minus the swirly things I don't like the swirly things but I do think it's cute nice little capelet put over your shoulders and you know stay warm or what have you um, and I saw that and I was like, oh, that's really nice. And then I saw this one. Try to get the instructions out the way. Oh my gosh. I was in love. But because this is out of a Cascade book, it only has a 32 inch width across the top which I don't know enough about these. They do wrap and turn, so I don't know enough about these directions to know whether or not there's a way to fix it to be wider slash longer. Because the problem is, while I love the look of this, and it's basically just a short row wedges shaped around the body, I was more concerned about it sitting up too high and not covering my arms or going down a little bit lower. So I was on a mission to try to find something that gave me the same effect. Like I would really like this though, because it's a shawl, you literally pick it up, you put it on and you just drape it and it does its thing. Like that other one is also just a shawl, but it has a tie that you would use to keep it closed over you. And I didn't want to do, you know, deal with the fiddly part of that. So that wasn't it exactly. But then cue in the whisper. And what this does, I can't show you because it has this, uh, you know, needle on there or whatever, but it fans out at the back and it turns into this, uh, what she describes as a manta ray wingspan. Um, so you block it, you stretch it, 
and I love that idea. <laughs> so you put it on like a poncho. It basically stops maybe right here and it'll be that long, but then the back of it flares out like the wings, right? And I just think that's so cute. And it has these um, decorative little eyelets on the bottom, as well as the eyelets across around the body, which I think is just so adorable. And I've had this thing going for the longest time. Originally, I was gonna make this for a friend of mine who was dealing with some death in the family. And then she had another series of death and it was just, it was just too much. So I decided, and it sounds so weird to say now, but when I was going to make this for her, it was in a different yarn and it had a, it had a meaning behind it. It was to represent her son and her remaining family. And so I was gonna embroider like a little blue heart for the boy and, and then her sister passed and I was like, it's not gonna have the same meaning or effect. So I want to give her something else, but I just have to figure out what that will be. She said that she's one of those people who's always cold and she always has a blanket or a wrap or sleeves or something. So I knew that a poncho or a wrap, a nice thick, not thick, but like a nice long and big swooshy Paris type thing would be perfect for her but then this other thing happened I was just like oh boy I don't know I don't know it just it just didn't seem like the right thing because my thought process behind the shawl I wanted to make for her would have been focusing on her son and if you're a person that knits you often think about a person as you're working on it you kind of feed your love into the garment etc cetera, etc cetera. and I didn't want to feed sadness because I was sad for the other passing in her family you know so I just decided to scrap that I'm going to find something else that represents her as a whole and somehow or another incorporate her missing family that I knew and and hopefully that'll you know suffice for her I, i'm sure she would be fine either way but i don't know it, it just took us all by surprise like we all knew about it and everything and i just didn't want to i didn't i don't know i just didn't want to so i'll find her something else that comes from the heart as well and hopefully with life being unpredictable as it is you just hope you have enough time to do the good things that you want to do so with that being said, that is all that I have. I am going to continue sipping on my coffee. Well, it's actually not real coffee anymore. It's almost cold, so it has like a little bit of tepidness to it. So we're gonna stick this in the microwave again. Um, I only have five more rows to finish off the uh, whisper wrap. So I'm gonna do that today. Um, my neighbors are wanting to do a cookout tomorrow, which sure you know I was like because we're new neighbors we both moved in right around the same time I think we got here maybe two or three weeks before they did and you know they're really cool people I really love them they're so far <laughs> you know everybody has stories of neighbor drama but I haven't had that issue but yeah so that's my weekend or that's my day and my weekend it's a beautiful day outside it's getting a little warm but it's not a hundred degree warm so we're gonna take the kids on some errands do a little craft store shopping um, have to do some cooking for tomorrow and then since I'm off on Monday just relax so I do want to find another project to cast on oh one other thing before I forget how could I forget my my happy place yarn so if you're in the knitting in the yarn world, never mind knitting or crocheting, but she's a crocheter, TL, Tony Lipsy from TL Yarn Crafts. She released her new yarn with Hobie and it's called Happy Place, right? And anybody knows that I cannot miss a sale. Like I feel so, yeah, FOMO is real. It, it's a real thing. So she's been hyping it up and I was really excited to get it because I like the quality of her. You know, I just trust her opinion, right? She built this rapport with the people on the other side of the screen. And 
I went ahead and I looked through my budget and I was like, okay, I'm gonna put some money aside and I'm gonna order the day that it launches so I can be a part of the launch party. You know, I fell asleep. <laughs> I was so tired that day. But when I woke up at 4.30 or five, close to five, oh, you hear that? It's an ambulance. We don't get much of that out here in the country, so somebody must be sick. Anyway, I went ahead and placed my order and I'm gonna put up a screenshot of the pattern. The pattern she released the same day that I ordered my yarn and it just, it was such a perfect timed release. This is the Sweet Shop Blanket by Penrose Knits, Laura of Penrose Knits released this pattern. She had been talking about it for a while. I love the way how she described it and felt while making it. And I love the look of this blanket. Now, if you know Pearl Soho, they have what they call a prism blanket, which I've been wanting to make as well. Well, when I watched Laura's video, which you can go watch that, um, she was talking about how she started that same prism blanket but was easily bored because the triangles were so big and um, something I think about the construction and she just, I don't know, I don't remember what exactly she said, but I know that whole thing about the triangles being too big was a fear of mine and why I had not cast it on. And so when she created this one, they're like two little teeny tiny squares, I mean teeny tiny triangles stuck together and I won't give away how they're done because it's a paid for pattern, but I'm really looking forward to it. And so the yarn colors I ordered in the Happy Place was like an almond color and then a couple of color colors. I think I got a red, I'm pretty sure I got a pink, and I don't remember what else. Those might have been the only three, but I have some linen quill in that um, berry uh, pink. It's like a raspberry type pink and a hot pink. It's similar to this color, if not the same. It's gonna be such a cute blanket. And so that's gonna be my ongoing project for a while. Um, but I am trying to find like another garment type project um, because I don't have one. <laughs> and we're heading towards fall, so it only seems fitting to throw something on the needles for that season. So. That's it, that's officially it. I thank you so much for coming around here. Um, I'm pretty sure I botched up the intro as usual because I never remember to say everything. But again, this is Tiffany. I hope you liked the video. I hope you will subscribe and come back and see me again. Um, yeah, because I don't do a whole lot of trying to sell you anything. I'm just really sharing my journey and my projects as I come upon them. Um, yeah, that's it. So come along for the ride. We'll have fun. I like to talk about yarn and I like to talk about knitting. So there we go. <laughs> Y'all can come with me. All right. Bye.